What's going on YouTube? Burlington Northern HO fan here. And today we've got a video on a locomotive that is a bit of a sore topic with me. We have here a 70s slash 1980s Bachman here. These things are uh, not known for their reliability, but I got this one for a good deal. It was sold as not working, but I'm curious to open one of these up and compare them to the other locomotives of the time period, such as the Power Torque and the Lifelikes, and see what the differences are, and see which makes this so unreliable, and uh, we'll get, see if we can get this thing running. So, let's take it out of the box here, since we still have the original box, which is pretty neat. So, we take this just like that. And there it is, just out of the box like that. A nice little Santa Fe, fake Santa Fe paint scheme of an F40PH. So, we've got the X2F couplers or horn hook couplers. The horns are a little oversized on this, but it's not a model, it's a uh, toy. But uh, and the wheels look not too bad, they don't look too dirty. Let's take this thing over to the track and see if this unreliable locomotive will actually run. Alright, here we have the locomotive on the track. Let's see if we can get this thing to run. Okay, so it's running. That's about half power. It should be doing a lot better than it's doing. Let's see if we can go in reverse. That's more than full power and it's struggling. I'm curious, what's the motor smell like? Oh yeah, that is one burnt out smelling motor. Let's uh, take this thing apart and see what that motor looks like. All right, so here we are back on the workbench. Now, if I remember, never owned one of these Bachmans, but I'm pretty sure these are just the two tabs and it just kind of, body comes off somewhat, like so. Kinda, and then it just pops out very nice and easy like that okay I'm looking at this it looks very similar to a lifelike actually that is comical I wonder if that somebody added that that is styrofoam on the front of the locomotive that's got to be somebody added that please tell me somebody added that and that's not factory Wow that's crazy Anyway, here's our motor, and, uh, well, there's only one thing really to do. Let's take it out, see what it looks like inside there. Real quickly, I wanted to showcase the difference between the lifelike of the same era and the Bachman of the same era, of the same locomotive. This is also an FP FP40H. I'm going to take the shell off of this locomotive, and we're going to look at what this one looks like from the inside. Give me one second. All right, so here we are inside the lifelike version of this locomotive, and as you can see, they're pretty similar. The motors are almost exactly the same. The lighting system is a little different. The styrofoam obviously isn't there, but this one has brass wheels for pickup. This one has steel wheels for pickup. The motor tires are actually metal, whereas the motor tires on this locomotive are not so there's the subtle differences between the two but otherwise they're pretty much the same I am curious to see uh, open this gearbox up and see what the difference is between the two so let's get into this locomotive and take it apart so if we just should be the same pretty much as the lifelike you've pushed down on these tabs right here you should pop the motor down and out of the chassis. Okay, so I'm actually wrong on this one. This one, it actually has a little plate here where you have to unscrew it and then it should just pop the motor out. Let me take that screw out. And there we go, there's our piece. And there we go, our motor is out of the locomotive. Well, that's nice to see that plastic piece broke. Wonderful. Anyway, 
we have our motor out of our locomotive and now we can take the brushes off we also can get to our gearbox which is by just doing one of these by doing that that off. Well, we can look inside here. And what I see is no oil. And I also see well, another problem with these Bachmans is that they usually have cracked gears. And I do not see cracked gears on this locomotive. Which is good. That's supposed to be a common problem with Bachman locomotives. Let's take the brushes off and actually we'll be able to open up the motor and take a look at that commutator. So we want to take our wheels out, just like so. There we go. And I'm going to place them like that with the top side being the side that faces me. So I remember which way to put them back in. Guess we can take these out too since they kind of want to come out. Go. We have our one of our gears. Another one of our gears here. Look at like they're in decent shape. So actually, yes. Now we're gonna do what we were saying we were gonna do. We're gonna take our brushes out. Okay, there's one, and there we go. We have a nice healthy spring, which is good. That means that we have a, here, one second. As I was saying, we have a nice healthy spring. It is springing out, which means that it did not overheat, which is good. Let's screw this guy. Just like that, and we can have our other brush, and now we can have the motor by itself. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these springs, and I'm going to put them in here, just like that. So now they're in there, safe and sound, and now what I should be able to do is just... Hmm, the brushes don't want to come out. That's fine. What we'll do now is we're going to take the motor completely apart here. We're going to take these guys here. Bada bing, bada boom. And now we should be able to separate. Put, place your bets in the comments. What do you think this commutator is going to look like? I'm thinking black. Okay. There's one of our gears down there. That looks like it's in good shape. There's our thrust washer for the uh, motor. We don't want to lose that. So we're going to put this side of the casing off to the side. And we're going to flip this over. We have our gears here, which we can take out. And I'm actually, I'm going to because this is looking pretty dry in here. And I would like to get all of the bad grease out of here. We have both our gears out. Uh, these motors are different colors, which is good. That means we can see which way they go back in if we decided to take them out, which we pro I probably will because I want to clean this casing because it's pretty nasty. But here's the, here's, the big, here's the big thing. Will the commutator look black? Motors out. And wow, look at that commutator. That is a dirty commutator, I, most dirtiest commutator I think I've ever seen. Wow.
That is pretty nasty. Look at look at all the carbon that's in there. This definitely was a well-used locomotive. Luckily, our brushes are staying in their holes, which is good because I, I don't really care to take them out if I don't have to. If I was to actually completely wash this casing, those brushes would have to come out. But now looking at that and this, I'm, I'm, I'm going to say, yeah, we're going to have to take those brushes out and clean this completely. Otherwise, it's, it's still going to run pretty bad. Now, the magnets... Yeah, the magnets we can leave them in there the case the uh brushes though we'll take this little screwdriver and we'll just push them out the back side just like that now our brushes are out we can take a look at them they're pretty nasty looking too but i'm wondering if i can just flip them around to put on the nice copper side like that and then we should probably have a good setup there so I'm gonna put those brushes in the styrofoam as well and I'm gonna take this casing and I'm gonna clean it out I will be back when I do that all right I have taken the casing and I've cleaned it out used some rubbing alcohol cleaned it out but the next thing we need to work on is this commutator so I'm gonna take my fiberglass pencil here and I'm just gonna Look at the difference in that and what it used to look like and what it looks like now. That is ridiculous. Also, another thing to note, look at the carbon that's on my hand from that. That is disgusting. <laughs> so let's just keep, keep her going. All right. Another thing to look at, I just remembered. You look at our windings, they look pretty healthy. Nothing looks like it's burned out or anything like that. So these should be good. So remember, a commutator is going to go in like so, just like that. And the magnets are going to grab the motor and want to put it back in its place. So we're just going to do that. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to immediately go for the thrust washers that are in this casing there's one right here on that and I'm gonna just put that right there just so I don't forget it anyway we got to put these gears on first so let's put these gears on first and we are very lucky here to not have any broken or cracked gears in here because that is a common very common thing that happens to these locomotives Okay, let's make sure we have some good movement here. All right, with that, we should be able to put our other casing back on. So let's just kind of wipe that out of there. We can put our casing back on, just like so. There we go. Now we're going to take our screws that we took out earlier and we're going to put those back in. Make sure they're not too tight. If they're too tight, you could have the possibility of stripping out either the screw or the plastic that you're screwing into because it's metal and plastic and this is the moment where we're going to go and add some oil to this all right we have all our gears and all our wheels back into the locomotive now what we're going to do is we're going to add our oil and our grease so this is a plastic gear locomotive it really doesn't need that much grease but i'm just going to add some anyway what it really wants is oil. Oil, you don't want to put too much because you're dropping it right into the motor, which could have been what happened to this motor. It could have eaten up that oil and messed up the commutator. 
which will cause you to have what just happened to this one where it's all black and it's burned up. Give me one second. Sorry about that. I had to go find my oil. There we go. Just a little nice little dab in here like so. Okay. Just like that. Now we can put our cover back on, which unfortunately is kind of brittle and a little bit broken on me, which sucks, but now what we can do, we can kind of roll that back and forth just a little bit, get that grease worked in there. There we go. Just like that. Okay. Now we do the electrical part here. We are going to put our brushes and our springs back in. Which, this is the easy part on the Bachman. On a Tyco Power Torque, this is the hard part. There we go. There we go. Now, I'm going to do this off camera because putting springs in is stressful, so I'm just going to do that real quick. All right. With that, we successfully got our springs back into the locomotive. And what I did is I usually do this one at a time. I'll put the spring in, then I'll hold the metal plate on the spring, take the screw with my other hand, and screw it down with my other hand while I'm holding it. Otherwise, this will just keep wanting to come off. So on these, that's not so hard, but on a power torque, oh, good Lord. It's not fun. This is easier because on a power torque, you don't have the ability to just drop the brush and the spring in in line with the plate on. With the power torque, you have to put the plate, the spring, and the brush and sandwich it together. And it's a pain. But this, you don't have to do that. And life likes are the same way. So now we're going to push our motor back up into our locomotive. Just like so, hopefully. Give me a second here. Sorry for all the jump cutting. I'm just trying to be very careful with this locomotive because as you can see, pieces have been breaking on me. It's very brittle. It's old. So I'm trying my best to keep it in good shape. Unfortunately, well, we could probably use what's left of this piece here. No, we can't. It's broken completely. So this motor is going to be kind of loose in here, but that's going to have to do it. We don't have the piece anymore because it broke. But now we have the locomotive back together. We can try moving this thing over to the track and seeing if the, it's changed any. All right, so here we have the chassis on the track and let's see if it does it. Oh yeah, look at that. Beautiful. That's about half power. Now that's about as fast as it should be going for half power. Awesome. Let's go in reverse. Perfect. Let's go put the shell back on this thing and I'll put some cars behind it and we'll end the video. All right, there we are on the track, pulling a couple cars. It's an 80s Bachman, so it doesn't have a lot of pulling power. I tried pulling four rolling stock. It only was able to handle three. It's a little sluggish, but it's doing its job. And as the more and more I run this thing, the better and better it'll run. Hopefully, with it being a Bachman, you never know. But it's, it's pretty decent. Not bad for the little Bachman. But yeah, anyways, that's that's pretty much it to repair one of these things. It's not that hard. These old pancake drive locomotives are very easy to repair as long as you... Oh, see, now it's sticking over there. As long as you have, you know, you know what you're doing and you, you do it right. So now it's got problems. Hold on one second. Okay, as I was saying, the Bachman gods have this have gotten angered at me for talking crap on them. But anyway, it's running. That's all that matters. The more I run it, the better it'll get. It's a Bachman.
it's not that hard to work on. That's the end of the video. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care, and wait for it to come back around. <laughs> Take care. Peace.